So I, I was asked to talk about the methodology for costing uh, WASH within an NCP. Um, and th this is um, sort of with the intention of, uh, of having more countries uh, doing their own costings uh, of, of their um, national cholera plans. Um, but in order to get there, I will talk a bit about uh, how we did the costing for the global investment case, as that provides some of the sort of building blocks of, of, uh, of, of the costing methodology. Uh, and then towards the end, um, uh, I will go on to um, some considerations and, and guidance for how to do a, a, a costing for the, for the NCP. So in order to do a costing, there are a few basic uh, questions um, to, to answer. Um, and uh, it's, it's really not rocket science at all, so anyone can do this. Um, so first, w what is the intervention? Um, so it needs to, the, the intervention needs to be defined to a level of detail where you can um, gather unit costs on, on, on the interventions. Um, and for a global investment case, we needed the cost data to be ready available. We couldn't go out and collect a, a lot of information from primary sources. Um, and it needs a degree of specificity to the intervention. So we drew on a sort of already existing um, sort of set of in interventions or, or standards or whatever, whatever you want to call it, is the uh, um, basic wash. Um, the point uh, on the JMP ladder that corresponds to basic water, um, basic sanitation, and basic hygiene. Uh, and these were the uh, these were the sort of expectations for countries that are expecting to eliminate cholera should should um, should set as a minimum for for achieving that. Um, for, for water, um, it was cr critical to have some water quality elements. So we we call it basic plus, which is uh, a, a low cost water treatment um, to ensure safety. And uh, for the intents and purposes of the costing, it was uh, chlorination either at the uh, source or at the point of use. So the second question is, who, who is the intervention delivered to? And there are two things we need to know. One is the baseline population coverage of basic plus wash services. And f um, the, the other is um, to, to know the, the population that we're targeting um, in, in order to achieve the, the goals. So in terms of the baseline, we use the source uh, the JMP figures for 2015, um, broken down by rural urban. Um, we, we assume that cholera hotspots have a lower than national average. Um, so we used a slightly convoluted methodology to re reduce um, by an appropriate amount the coverage in hotspots um, because uh, hotspots, uh, hot spots because they have low wash coverage. Um, and because the latest data we have from the JMP is 2015, we felt it was quite realistic to assume that there's been little development in coverage in the last uh, three years in, in, uh, in coverage levels. In terms of the target population, in the, uh, until 2030 or, or 2040, where the, the, the model uh, um, runs until, we have to assume population growth. And so we used uh, UN Population Division um, f forecasts for, for that period, in, which was split by rural and urban area, and assumed that hotspots grow at the average national rate, which may be a, a poor assumption, but we didn't have any better data to go on. We also, um, as Monica pointed out, we um, assumed a minimum of 80% um, coverage of basic uh, water sanitation hygiene, um, in, in uh, hot spots to eliminate cholera. Now that 80% um, admittedly was slightly picked out of thin air um, because there's, there's either no or there's c conflicting evidence on what coverage is needed in order to be confident that you um, can eliminate cholera and prevent it from coming back. So we use 80% and then we uh, use 90% in, in sensitivity analysis. Um, and in order to know sort of at what time point populations are served, we just assumed of the total population in hotspots that needs to be served until the end of the roadmap period for a country, 
we assumed equal tranches of population would get the would be served um, uh, in, until the end of the roadmap map period. So the third question is, uh, what is included in cost? There are many different types of cost. So there's capital and infrastructure cost. There's demand creation and behavior change cost. And there's operation and, and, and maintenance cost. And th this is more at the community level. Obviously, there are the policy systems strengthening costs, which, which will be mentioned later. Um, but in terms of having global availability of these data, they, 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 it varies quite a bit. So the most is known about the capital and infrastructure costs because we have sort of national and international standards and quite a lot of data on that. On the operational costs, some data, so, so some is known, especially for utilities, but for operating um, community water schemes and for operating um, a, a, a toilet, we have rather poor data. Um, on maintenance cost, um, we have little data, and um, in terms of the, the cost needed in order to ensure this 80% um, use of sanitation facilities and hand washing practices, um, the, the, we have the least data. But we got around that by, um, by making some assumptions, and for some we, countries that didn't have data, we we extrapolated from the nearest country of the same um, level of economic development. So it, it allowed us to create um, some global estimates for the 47 countries, um, but recognizing there are weaknesses. Um, and to, just, just to have an idea of where the, the main costs are, when you consider the, life, the full life cycle costs from the capital investment to the running over the next 15, 20 years, um, th th there's qu it's quite a sort of balance between capital and operation and maintenance costs. Um, so it's important to ensure those are both well represented in the cost estimates. So where do unit costs come from? How do we get data? So um, happily we could draw on the World Bank study that was mentioned earlier where um, d data was collected or extrapolated for 125 countries and they were also, um, we had data for basic wash and we had data for safely managed wash. Um, so we had the data. Um, so a lot of the studies um, were, were old um, that, that we used for that study and so um, we had to inflate from the year of the data to the current period. And so that, because the, um, the, the inflation rate of the wash um, services might be different from the general inflation rates, um, th there may be some in inaccuracies that are introduced by this methodology. Um, in the second stage, for, for, this, for the cholera investment case, we sent these unit cost estimates to 24 key countries. So we, we focused on those countries with the largest numbers so that we had the best uh, data for a global, um, the, 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 the overall global numbers. Um, and we had responses from 24 out of about 30 countries we contacted. Um, although the staff were not necessarily uh, economists, they had access to the latest uh, unit cost studies from the countries or, or benchmark uh, cost studies that uh, governments sometimes have. Um, and so they could validate the, the costs that we were using. And in many cases, they adjusted, um, they proposed adjustments. So we have um, confidence that the global results are roughly right. I mean, we could produce a confidence interval around the, the 65 billion. Um, but we, you know, we have some, some confidence in, in that overall number. But when we come down to break, break it down to country level, there may be some significant inaccuracies. And that's why we're proposing countries to use the tool themselves and introduce uh, your, your own um, lo locally validated numbers, especially on the unit costs. So that, that's development wash. In terms of emergency wash, um, just, just very briefly, the, the intervention was, uh, as stated in the, um, the, the, the global investment case, is chlorination, temporary wash services, and hygiene behavior change, delivered to 90% of the population in an outbreak um, of those who don't have wash. Um, and we uh, assume that not every hotspot has an outbreak each year. So only 30% of hotspot population experiences an outbreak in a given year. The costs included uh, mainly the operational costs because we are not investing in, in infrastructure in most of these interventions. 
And we, we used a sort of global estimate from IFRC of $9 uh, per person for an outbreak. Um, and, and that was used across all countries. Um, we also validated this unit cost um, by 19 countries, and so, some gave us a higher cost. So it gave us about a $12 weighted average cost across the 47 countries. Well, um, Melissa presented the, some of the key results earlier, so I won't dwell on this for too long. But I think that um, th these are numbers that we can s start using um, uh, as uh, global advocates of, uh, of uh, cholera el elimination. Um, so we have uh, roughly $2.6 billion per year, which represents less than 3% of the global SDG 6.1 and 6.2 cost. And this is about $5.6 per person per year for capital costs um, across hotspot populations. So it actually sounds, going from the billions down to $5.6 per person, it's, it's starting to sound more doable, uh, more feasible. Um, in terms of the O&M costs, uh, it's, uh, it's around $1.6 billion, uh, at around $3.4 per person per year in hotspots. And the emergency wash costs, so we consider this both a cost and a benefit because uh, at the moment we're spending around 445 million, which would be required to cover all the outbreaks globally. Um, but we can reduce this if we implement the roadmap successfully to around um, a quarter of that um, because we still have the crisis countries that have not eliminated cholera. So we, we, we should see this as a massive saving. It, it's, it's a cost now, but it's a potential saving. Uh, over time. Um, so we've already seen this. Um, in terms of the breakdown um, between the d different components of the roadmap, we see overall when you add the WASH O&M costs, operation and maintenance, uh, WASH accounts for around 91% of the total roadmap costs, with OCV at 7% and surveillance at 2%. Um, this doesn't include the um, the uh, earmarked uh, amount for the global coordination. This is for the country operations. When we look at it by funding source, uh, in the green is um, to WASH capital and emergency response covered by either bilateral donors and or countries. Um, in terms of the, the orange, this is uh, met more by countries. That's the operation and maintenance. Um, uh, OCV and uh, non-GAVI countries um, and country surveillance. So it's important when we look at the roadmap costs for, for a country to, to assess what, not only what the cost is, but how that cost is likely to be, to be met from, from which source. So um, in terms of the, the costing, we don't yet have a detailed budgeting tool. Um, so countries um, who don't have any alternative, say, tool or methodology could use the, the investment case tool that will be, um, you, you'll be trained on those who are attending the session at five o'clock, um, which has, a, has the sort of uh, main elements of cost of the roadmap, which um, you can use to get top line numbers. However, if you want to assess really the, the detailed budgets needed in different uh, provinces and districts of a country, then um, really um, in the short term it w you would be encouraged to develop your own model. It's not, um, it's not very difficult, you just need the right disaggregations. Um, and in the sort of medium term we will have tested the um, GTFCC budgeting tool um, in the four countries and th this will be made available as soon as uh, it, is, it, it is ready. Um, so obviously we need to engage with the key WASH stakeholders because uh, we shouldn't be doing this uh, in isolation, um, especially when um, it's um, sort of uh, um, some of the non-WASH stakeholders who are driving this at country level. Um, so we need to know population numbers living in hotspots. That's part of the situation analysis. Um, we need to, in order to aggregate at country level, we need to know whether we're looking at hotspots individually or whether we're grouping them by areas of a country or by um, severity um, or endemicity of, of the hotspot. 
Um, obviously, if you're doing it hotspot by hotspot, that's a lot of information that needs to be gathered. Although you could apply similar standard unit costs across all hotspots if, if they're similar. Um, then we need to know the water sanitation hygiene coverage in, in hotspots and what type of coverage, whether it's um, uh, less than basic, uh, basic, um, what sort of um, water safety plans are in place, and so on. Um, also, we need to, the, the national level, you need to confirm what is the wash service level that you're targeting. Is it um, basic? Uh, is it higher than basic? Um, and, and the coverage to eliminate cholera. You may choose in your country to go for higher than 80%. It would be hoped for. Um, and then finally, um, to um, collect information on unit costs, um, whether you have standard um, benchmarks um, sort of for, for government contracts, for contractors, um, or whether you need to sort of assemble some data yourselves in terms of um, say for a, a sanitation coverage, you'd need to put together all the sort of components of a toilet plus behavior change to get some idea of, uh, of unit cost. Um, and then not to forget the policy management and, and software costs, which um, sort of will appear probably as a lump sum um, added on to the community level costs. Um, and obviously the wash costing needs to be integrated with a broader costing of, of the roadmap. And I, I just wanted to, in terms of the costing, and because costs can vary significantly depending on what level of service and what area of the country you're looking at, I think uh, we, we should um, just focus on this just quickly. In terms of water, it can be anything from a, a surface water or an open source um, to a, some kind of uh, um, tube well, a, um, a hand pump, um, up to sort of pipe tapped uh, uh, water with a water safety plan. And somewhere in the middle, you've got a sort of chlorination or some kind of filtration um, at the point of use, which um, will help um, uh, improve the safety. In terms of sanitation, it's anything from open defecation to an open traditional pit through a VIP to um, sort of uh, full treatment and fecal sludge management. Um, and then on the hygiene side, um, there's uh, obviously there's no hand washing. Then there's a, say, a, um, uh, when you've got um, an infrastructure and or um, water and or soap, but not all three, then it wouldn't, it would be considered limited um, coverage. Whereas in the middle, you've got a, uh, you've got the, the infrastructure, which in this case is very simple. Um, or uh, with, with, with soap and water. Um, and, and then at the top, uh, which uh, um, is, is a more sort of uh, fixed f facility. Um, so in, in terms of the global investment case, we took um, sort of basic plus, as, as mentioned earlier. Um, and the safe, safely managed standard is something m many countries are going for. But um, we would say um, aim for basic first and then think about safely managed afterwards to ensure that no populations and communities are left behind. And then, um, obviously, uh, for the national costing, uh, you need to look at national standards. And uh, we expect and hope these would be at least basic plus, um, but in some cases they may be below, and then in that case they would need to be reconsidered as to whether it's sufficient to eliminate cholera. Um, so, just in conclusion, WASH is a major cost of the roadmap and brings many. We should no, look not just at the costs, because it's a large cost. It brings very significant benefits. Um, so, but the, the global investment case is not sufficient for you to argue and do advocacy at country level. We need country-led and validated estimates for costing and the investment case. Um, so the investment case tool can be implemented with minimum cost and effort, um, but be aware it only brings ballpark estimates. There may be missing variables. On the benefit side, um, there are a whole lot of health benefits that are not included because of lack of global data on those. So um, the, the, um, it, it, is, it is ballpark. Um, but it, it can be improved by some country-level validation of the numbers and, and adjusting it accordingly. Um,
So uh, for uh, uh, the, the costing, it, we, we need to bu budget uh, for the technical support that is offered from regional and global platforms, um, and also at country level, you need to really devote some resources and time for this to be done properly. So um, thank you. Sorry if I went over. <laughs>